But these are so duh, no, stop. And it showed a lot of it was like a lot of like the real footage. Obviously, this is um, a fictional. The guy who plays Offred's boyfriend in The Handmaid's Tale. I'm sorry, I'm all fidgety. Fidgety. Hey everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Today we're gonna do a little bit more chit chat about Netflix and I specifically wanted to talk about a few shows that are based on real life events, either loosely or directly. But there's so much great content out there. There's so much, it's not even true crime stuff, even though there's some great true crime stuff that's out there too. But I wanted to do a separate video that just sort of focuses on things that are based on reality, if you will. So we're just gonna dive right in and we're gonna talk about a bunch of shows. So the first one is one I admittedly have not finished yet and it's The Crown. And if you're living in the dark about The Crown, it is following Queen Elizabeth becoming queen and basically her life as queen in England. And I have watched the first the first season and like almost all of the second season. It was so interesting to me and continues to be. I am not super well versed in the royal family back then. I am much more Will and Kate, Harry and Meghan <laughs> historical information is what I know. But I found it so fascinating with the position she was put into when her father passed away. And years ago I saw the King's speech and kind of didn't know anything about that part of the history and then never really picked up anything more after that. But I found it so interesting learning about the royal family and I know some of this is obviously based in fact and some of it is based in fiction, but I find it completely fascinating. I'm sucked into it. I think Claire Foy does such an amazing job in the first two seasons, and I'm super excited to see Olivia Coleman in season three and Helena Bonham Carter. And I'm curious to see where all this goes with the family and the inside stuff. But I am like, I'm totally sucked in to Margaret, all of it. I think it's just incredibly well done. I think maybe if you're looking for something with a little bit of historical touch to it, maybe something with a little bit more you get to see the fashions that are going on back then, but definitely something that's steeped more in the history of things. This is a great way to go, and I am excited to keep on the path of the crown. I'm just gonna quickly talk about Unbelievable. In case you didn't watch my first video, if you have, you can skip ahead a minute. But Unbelievable is about a woman who was raped and in Washington State in 2008, and she reported it to the police, and basically they didn't believe her and got her to recant her statement and the person was never caught, they never pursued the case. And then three years later in Colorado, a woman was raped in her apartment and a detective assigned to that case wound up connecting it to other cases and through tremendous hard work and perseverance was able to connect a whole bunch of cases all the way back to the one in 2008 and get the guy, basically spoiler alert, but it's a true story. And this is another one that is extremely powerful. I said this in my other video, the first one and a half episodes I found extremely difficult to watch. But once I got through them, we were into the police investigation. It's really well acted. It's really well done. It's well shot. It's well scripted. It's the emotions in it. I cried. Like it's another really, really powerful show that I think is worth watching, but you definitely have to be in the right mindset to watch this and in the right place. So just know going in, it's there are graphic scenes in this, there is extremely heavy contents, obviously, and it is a lot to watch, but it is another really important show, I think, and uh, needs to be watched. The first American crime story that was on was The People vs. O.J. Simpson, and this was and is tremendously well done. So, even though I still can't see Cuba Gooding Jr. as OJ, I think this was so interesting, so well done. Sarah Paulson is everything. Sterling K. Brown is in this. There's so many people that are in this, but the behind the scenes on the OJ Simpson trial and sort of how and where it all went wrong is completely fascinating to watch and completely gripping to watch. And this was another one 
I remember this case. I remember being in my friend's car when the verdict was announced on the radio. I remember watching the white Bronco. It interrupted, I wanna say like an episode of 90210. And I remember watching this and for me, this was like the first big case that was really public and that was out there and I wasn't paying attention to some of the things like the Central Park jogger. I was aware of it being in New York at the time, but I wasn't sort of old enough to be grasping it in the same way. But this People vs. OJ was so incredibly well done. I just hugely highly recommend this. The acting is great in this. Courtney B. Vance is in this. There's so many people in it, but this is a must watch, I think. And I really feel like they nailed it completely. And again, Sarah Paulson, who in my book can absolutely do no wrong, does everything right as Marsha Clark in this. Another true crime that I haven't watched yet is Unsolved. And this is the Biggie and Tupac mystery. So bear with me. I don't know why I'm fascinated by this. Josh Dumel is in the show as one of the detectives. And I will admit that is part of what I'm interested in. But for some reason, the, and maybe it's just because it was like my, time like like whatever the 90s but I'm really interested in this I'm oddly fascinated by this case by the rivalry between the two of them by the unsolved mysteries of who killed them the conspiracy theories behind all of it I'm just freakishly weirdly oddly intrigued by this show and this is now on my list of shows that I need to watch the next show I want to recommend is Dirty John and this was a show where I didn't know anything about this. Connie Britton from Friday Night Lights is in this and she is, she's another one. The woman can do no wrong in my book and she is great in this. And Eric Bana plays Dirty John. And it's basically this woman who is, she's divorced, she's got two grown children. And she winds up meeting this guy and falling for him. And he turns out to be, like con artist doesn't even cover what a horrendous human being this man is but he basically works his way into her life. I don't want to ruin any of it. I didn't know the ending of this when I watched it. And when I tell you like speechless at how this ended and this is how the real life ends or this is how the story ended in real life, I was completely flabbergasted by this. But he basically is a horrible human being who works his way into this woman's life and gets her away from her kids and just completely like she's drinking all the kool-aid and her her kids don't like him and they're telling her to get away and things are not com like computing but she is staying with him and she is standing by him and my god do things go horribly wrong with this man so this is another one i i would watch it it is it is like twisted soap opera but it actually really happened which is what makes it so incredibly messed up Another movie that I want to see, which I haven't yet, and I need to read it, Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile. And this is about Ted Bundy, and this is the one with Zac Efron. So, I feel like after watching Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and the Charlie Manson thing, now I'm starting to be like, hmm, let's watch things with really horrible serial killers in them. So this is the Ted Bundy story. I've heard good things about this. I'm curious to watch it. I am kind of too old for High School Musical, but I watched it and I watched Neighbors and I get the Zac Efron thing. So I'm super curious to see Zac Efron in this role, but I'm sort of increasingly fascinated with some true crime, which that Golden State Killer book that I read last year is kind of what sparked a lot of it. But I'm really curious about this one. Again, this is one that I don't know much about it other than that I've heard good things about it. And it's about Ted Bundy, who was a horrible human being. So yes, that's on my list. And then another true crime one, which I don't know a lot about is The Staircase. And this is another one that I've heard great things about and friends of mine have told me about it. And this is about author Michael Peterson, who his wife uh, dies mysteriously. And I think she's like, falls down the staircase. And I think that's where that comes from or is found at the bottom of the staircase. And basically his entire life is turned upside down and he goes under the microscope. And I think there's like lots of secrets and he's got kids and all of it. And again, I've just heard a lot of things about this one and my antenna's up on the true crime again. So this is not 
fictionally done. Like I believe this is all the actual like interviews and court case. So it's not like a retelling, so to speak. This is not people acting it out. This is actually a true crime documentary. So I wanna watch it. And then to end things on a slightly maybe less depressing note, I hugely recommend The Social Network. And this is how Mark Zuckerberg created Facebook. I was fascinated by this movie when it came out. I am still fascinated by it. I just think it's, it's a David Fincher movie. It's so smart, it's so well done, it's so beautifully shot. I don't even care if some of it is not completely based in fact, which I'm sure some of it is not completely based in fact, but the entire concept of how Facebook came to be and how he came to be and all the bridges that were burned and the gasoline that was poured and the matches that were thrown along the way. I'm just fascinated by it because again, this is something that is steeped in reality. And I think anytime Justin Timberlake acts, I am there for it. Army Hammer as both of the Winklevoss twins is great. Their best friend whose name is escaping me, who was in The Handmaid's Tale, Andrew Garfield, I mean, Jesse Eisenberg, like there's so many people in this but this was so incredibly well done. I love how it was shot. I love the acting in it. I just, all of it, fascinated by it. Again, there's just something about these movies that are just based in things that happened in real life that feel like movies, but then you have to remind yourself that this is some stuff that actually really happened. I just love it. But I think this is just such a great movie and there's no murder to this one. So if you need something that isn't murdery, I feel like this, this and The Crown, I feel like the only ones on my list that don't involve murder. Sorry guys, but really well done, really good movie. And just, you know, go for it. Hunker down, go for it, and get lost in the world of Mark Zuckerberg for a couple hours. So that's gonna do it for this video. Let me know if you guys have other recommendations, if you've watched any of these, if anyone has watched the Biggie Tupac one, let me know what you thought about that. And I hope, as always, that you guys are doing well, that you're hunkered down at home and not going too kind of stir crazy with things and hopefully getting lost in a couple things on TV to help just, like I say, get lost for a little bit. But I hope you guys are well. Thanks for spending part of your day with me and I will see you guys super soon in the next video. Bye everybody, take care.